And in fact, I'll be talking to you about defaulting to yes to change the world. Now, since you guys have all been in this room and you go to this fabulous school, these signs here are probably not a surprise to you. They're probably not new, right? We can change the world. You're never too young to change the world. Be the change that you want to see in the world. How many of you believe it? I want to see a show of hands. Who here wants to change the world? Yeah, powerful. Who here believes you can change the world? Yeah. Who here knows how to do it? There we go. Hey now, talk to this one. I'm going to show you, we don't have all the answers, but there are some things that I've learned um, in my experiences that give us, that can give you some insights into where to start, into how to try, um, and truthfully, how to start tomorrow, because you have to, because the world needs you to. I'm going to do this through three stories, personal ones, that I want to share with you. The first happened three weeks ago. I was on a flight between San Diego and uh, Atlanta, and I am walking over to the kiosk, um, and I see a young man, sadly, walking back up the on-ramp. He's got a giant poster, um, a beautiful painting, actually, framed. Um, and he's walking back up, and the, there's two men at the kiosks are sort of looking at him like, oh, why did you think that you could bring this on this plane? And he's walking over sort of defeated and saying, my mother, I bought this for my mother. I spent $200 on this for my mother. And they say, there's nothing we can do for you. And they talk, and I just sort of, I'm walking by, but kind of, you feel that energy, you sort of feel, this is, there's something going on here. I don't like it. I don't like how these people are treating this man. Is it really that big of a deal to help him? And so I'm walking down the on-ramp, and I see a woman kind of at the end, right before the plane. And she scoffs. And so I look over my shoulder, and I see that she's scoffing at this young man, coming back down the on-ramp with the poster. And I think to myself, what can I do? These people are mistreating this boy, this man who just wants to bring, bring a poster home to his mother. What can I do in this situation that FDA rules will allow? And I, <laughs> I think to myself, I don't know but I'm going to try something. So I pause to the woman, I graze her arm, and I smile at her. And I say, I'm going to stand here and watch how you treat this child. And I'm not going to buy another ticket to Delta, depending on how you interact with this kid. I'm going to watch. She was kind of mad, actually. <laughs> she stood there saying, this has nothing to do with you. Why are you standing here? This is, me, this is about me and this child. And I said, this has everything to do with me. This has everything to do with all of us. Because this is how you treat people in the world. And is it really that big of a deal to do something extra to help this child? So I bring up this story because I think it's important, as a step one to changing the world, you need to hear the needs of others. You need to listen deeply. And even when you don't know what to do, you need to offer what you can. I wasn't sure what to do in the moment, but I tried something. And you know what? As I walked off the plane, that child waited for me. After a six-hour flight, it was three or four in the morning, we're getting off the flight, and he's standing there at the end of the on-ramp, and he said, thank you. He said, that meant a lot to me to know that there was an ally. I wasn't alone. So even though we didn't win the battle that day, he didn't feel alone in a moment. I did something. And I think it's really important to do something to help others, to make them feel less alone. My second story is about Kenya. When I was 18, I, I went to Kenya. Uh, I went to Ugenya to do a job. I wanted to work for a nonprofit there called the Matibabu Foundation. And when I went there, I was supposed to work in a youth center. Um, and what ended up happening was very interesting. I sat down and I had a 10-hour conversation with the executive director, and we talked about change. We talked about social change, what drives it, what is it, what's happened in history in America and Africa. And in that dialogue, we upended all of the rules. I was supposed to come to do this job, and now we had an even better idea. With my skill sets, I could help them launch a youth soccer league, a co-ed youth soccer league, 
because that was what was needed in that moment. And I didn't know how to do it. Like, I just, I, I don't know. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to raise money. I don't know how to align youth leaders from rural Uganda to get them to align to, in a youth soccer league for kids. I didn't know how to do it. But we decided that I could try, and that's what I would do with my time. This was the important rule that came from this. When you act with passion, people will stand up to help you. They will say yes to you. And I think that this is the most important thing that you can take from this talk, is that the world wants to help you. I know that sounds crazy, but let me tell you a story. I'm sitting in a restaurant in Nairobi in the middle of the World Cup, and there are soccer balls all around this restaurant because it's sort of celebratory of the World Cup. And I have that heart rate comes up again, comes up again. Oh my God, I have to do something. This feels uncomfortable. And so I asked someone if I can talk to the owner of the restaurant. And they say yes, and they found him, and he sat down with me, and I said, I am trying to do something that I don't know how to do. I'm trying to start a youth soccer league, and I need soccer balls, and you have soccer balls. Can you help me get these soccer balls to the kids that need them in Uganda? And he said, I will do you one better. I have a, a factory. I have tons of soccer balls. In two weeks, I will have them pumped up and sent out to you in rural again. And he did that. He did that. When you are passionate about what you are trying to do, People will stand up to help you. It's very important to know that, that you don't have to have all the answers. You do not know how to do that deep, that deep idea that you have in your soul, and your heart, that thing you really want to do, that thing you care about. You don't have to have all the answers, but you can ask for help. And when you do, it'll take you a step further down that path. Third story, Summer Collaborative. So I came here, I moved from Manhattan about six years ago to help launch a region for Teach for America. As I was doing that, community centers, which I know you guys had a, a breakout, many of you were talking about community centers. Community centers were reaching out and asking for teachers. That's not what Teach for America typically does. TFA places teachers in schools, not community centers. But we did try something. I couldn't offer them teachers in an out-of-school environment in, in the after-school setting, but I was able to get a grant. Again, I didn't know how to do this. But I asked, I asked Barclays for some funding to be able to pay teachers to work in community centers. And so what happened, five years later, is an entire organization with over 50 teachers working in community centers, 30 top high school kids a year, a new curriculum, a new data system, all across all community centers. What started with one step out of the ordinary is now an entire organization. And I want to show you, the, the thing that I learned from that was this concept of root cause analysis. So one of the things you need to know is that you will not know the answer to the problems that you identify. You will not, but you can define the problem. And that's the greatest power you have. So for an example, when I started placing students, uh, sorry, teachers in community centers, they came to my office and they were completely baffled. They were baffled by the state of community centers, the, the rapid decline of resources that were there. And what they said was, we don't know how to do this. There's no behavior systems. Why is there not a behavior system? Well, I don't know. They seem to have one, but there's no training. Why is there no training? Well, I don't know. Maybe that's something we could do. Yeah. And three weeks later, I'm walking through these different community centers, and all of the counselors at the Walnut Street YMCA were trained on positive behavior narration. All of our kids were crisscross applesauce, listening to counselors speaking positively about the behaviors they needed to demonstrate. Change is possible when you identify the problem, you figure out why that problem exists, and then you identify something you can do about it. Because I promise you, to each and every person in this room, there is something you can do about the things you care about today and right now. So in closing, what does it all mean? What is it, three minutes at Delta, three months in Kenya, and three years building the collaborative mean? Mean for change mean to raise the hands up in this room about how it is to actually build towards change in the world. Find your passion. I know this sounds cliche, but it's so important. There is something unique inside of you, believe it. There is something in you that you are meant to do. That's your passion. Listen to yourself and fight to figure out what it is. Because once you do, people will say yes to you. Once you find your passion, maybe it's a big, big, bold problem in the world. Maybe you think the education system is a problem. Maybe you think your sports team isn't running effectively enough. 
Find a problem that you care about and figure out the root cause. What's something I can do today? And then do it and ask for help. Because I promise you, when you ask your teacher for help or you ask your school leader for help or you ask your superintendent for help, especially coming from you, your voice, your voice as youth, it really matters and people will listen and they will stand up to help you. Try, learn, and try again. As I said, in each of these instances, I didn't know what to do. The folks who you've heard from today didn't know what to do, but they had to try something, some little thing. Once you identify the root cause, you identify a solution, try, start there. Learn from the failure, try again. Learn, try, learn, try. That's how it's done. Start now, because you cannot wait until you're in high school or college or in your career to do this. You have to start now, because then you'll have developed the skill sets to light the world on fire to really bring your ideas and your vision into the world. And so I challenge you, what headline do you want to make for today? You are here, nearly 100 of you, who care, who care about change in the world. What is it that you're going to do together? What is the change that you're going to be here a year from now speaking about? Because you can make a difference. I know you can. Take that seriously. Thank you.